I'd like to start off, um, first of all, by saying with um, a music documentary of this yeah. sort, uh, I want to thank you for letting us really enjoy the music. Thanks. Uh, I, I think there's a tendency sometimes to overproduce and try to make too much with the content of the documentary and not really get you to be able to enjoy the music where you were editing the visuals but letting the real star, the music, come through. So Yeah, finding that, was, that balance is really difficult. Yeah. I mean, until the very, very end, we kept massaging it to find the right balance. I feel like uh, the documentary was a really cool exploration of him um, and it was really well put together in terms of kind of telling a story. Mm -hmm. Did you know what, what story you wanted to tell through it, or is that something that you found out through the process? Thanks for your kind words. I was waiting for you to go, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, when he first asked me to make the film, we didn't, weren't quite sure what we wanted to do. We just knew we had these two shows in October, at the Pabst Theater, and that we wanted to do something with that. So we, we rode bikes and went to see Hard Day's Night at the Music Box Theater, which he hadn't seen before. You know, it was one of my favorites. So um, we looked at lots of different kinds of forms that the film could take, but I was really um, sure ultimately that, you know, where he was at in his career, and also the fact that I think through the illness he was kind of cresting in his success, um, I knew that it needed to be a simultaneous thing, which was an introductory film. If you'd never heard of him, now you have, and can learn about him. But that, it, but I wove into the back of it um, everything that a super fan could ever want and need at that point of ten years into his work. And so ultimately, in a good kind of push pull between him and me, between story and music, um, you know, I think we came up with this. I think ultimately he, the plan was never let's document uh, you and your illness. The plan was let's try to make something that kind of weaves in and out of these kind of states of consciousness, music, not music, and hopefully never notice the difference between the two, just kind of get swept up. Um, you know, I always joke around, because I work both in fiction and documentary. My fiction friends are like, how do you make documentaries? And I said, yeah, I don't know. Working with a script is so simple from the beginning. And for, <laughs> excuse me, in docs, at the end you get your script, it's a transcript. Mm -hmm. and like, that's how it turned out. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of an adventure that's sometimes like a hellscape, but also exciting. One of the characters that we kept uh, seeing throughout the movie that we were never introduced to was the stuffed monkey. Yes. Any story behind him? <laughs> um, the stuffed monkey was made by a super fan in Toronto, I believe. And, you know, a lot of people give Andrew presents, and that's nice. Um, but she had sent this mon monkey that was dressed just like he was, and it became kind of a companion. And then he ultimately, she ultimately made one for a couple of other people in the band, but the monkey also arrived with a Santa outfit and a Cubs outfit. Um, and the more we learned about her, she had, I hope I'm getting this right, I think I am. I believe her history is that she'd gone through a large phase of depression, and she started getting into these sock monkeys and became like a sock monkey expert. She's like really, really good at them. Um, and she said that channeling her depression into that and listening to his music saved her life. So the sock monkey gets his spot with great honor. How much footage did you have? I'm rusty on that one. I'm not sure anymore. The, I mean, the math on the shows would be two hours of shows, two nights times five cameras mm -hmm. is many hours, and then, um, I'm so stupid today, I'm making two new films, and I'm just like dumb as a stump, because I'm way in them right now, so I'll try and get you some stats, but, um, and then we shot, you know, in different intervals after that, over the course of about six months, and we would piece it together, but we even played with magic time here, too, like, there are actually two interviews that are only four days apart, and it looks like a year has gone by, and it's, it's the difference between some sleep yeah. and a shave. <laughs> I was like, just shave before you come over, it'll look like we, <laughs> we changed some time. Um, yeah, and also what I, one thing that I did with this film, because he's incredibly uncomfortable with cameras and talking about himself, uh, we, we'd known each other, by the time the film came out, we knew each other a decade, so I knew kind of how to move it around. But one of the things I did right at the end was that he came in to, do, uh, to check the surround mix on the songs, 
we were at a really great um, studio in Chicago, so we recorded an audio-only interview. It's actually woven through the film. Yeah. And he's the most relaxed, makes some of the loveliest statements about being a turtle or a bear. Those all kind of came out in that, that thing, so... Um, Not having the camera helped at that point. Immensely. Yeah. And then yeah. I had him kind of restate a couple, or retell me some stories he didn't remember telling me. And yeah. He didn't know that he didn't remember, didn't know that he'd told me before. So, I know how to trick him. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And for sharing me. your film with us. This was a, a great evening for us. Thanks for coming out. <laughs>